What is an inching valve? You gotta be stubborn. In this case, shortcuts were taken to save costs. Repair from the other previous repair shop was like $10,000. Hi guys, Fraser from Lifco Hydraulics. A repair, now this repair is what I call the taillight special, meaning that it only is gonna work while we can still see the customer's taillights. And that was at, at their request. They had bought the entire machine. This is a front end loader. They bought it for $5,500 and they just needed to get a little bit more life out of this. Not a whole lot. And this was a, a closed loop old Lindy unit called a BPV50. Their complaint was that the machine runs for about 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Then as soon as the oil gets hot, it no longer works and they have to wait for the oil to cool down before the machine will run again. So it's clearly a very inefficient hydraulic system, meaning oh, there's a lot of wear, which would make sense. Uh, this unit has not been made for, I wanna say, probably 25 to 30 years. I guess a new pump for the repair from the other previous repair shop was like $10,000. So he's looking for somebody just to get the thing running for him, just so he could use it. And even with the customer, he's not going to be using it all the time. So he might, might want to move some bales of hay like a few times a year or something like that. So he just wants it running. So this is the BPV that the customer wants done economically. What did we do to this before we put it on the bench? Basically all we really did was new bearings, new steels, clean everything all up. But that is what the customer specifically requested is they wanted it done as cheap as possible. We're having an issue having it come on stroke. There could be something in the control. I'm not sure. We're going to have to dig into it and see if we can figure out. Tried new solenoids, no change. Uh, disconnected the inching valve, no change. Supplied external pressure to the pump, got it to stroke, everything was good. Then we thought maybe the charge pressure was too low, so increased the charge relief from 200 to 400, no change. Couldn't figure out what was going on. Finally got pissed off enough, I said it. Took the charge, uh, the inching valve all apart and found the parts that were installed incorrectly, put it back, the way I thought it should go. I just started messing around and getting it to the settings, got it to work. So it was just on the original inspection when they took everything apart to see how bad it was, they put it back together, they put it together wrong. So the handle was here. Okay. So what this does is, well, I can run it on the bench to show you. signal going to it so this inching valve is our it's an inching valve or a throttle control or something so if the customer wants to go inside a barn he doesn't want it to go real fast he can set it so he can inch along real slow but if he's got to go from field A to field B and it's two miles down the road he can open it wide open and get full flow so by varying the position of this, I can vary my flow going to it. What is an inching valve? It hydraulically reduces the throttle. So if full throttle uh, was 100%, this would make full throttle uh, 20%, 15%. So in this case here on this BPV50, if you put full throttle, normally it would be a control pressure of eight bar, but this t this one, when it's engaged, would limit it to three bar, meaning that the displacement would be lower uh, for whatever you're doing. Uh, nowadays, uh, they wouldn't use an inching valve. You wouldn't do it hydraulically. Most of them, they would just have an electronic control and they'd have some computer in there that's saying to, to reduce that function. So at 1800 RPM, we had 23 gallons. I ran it up to pressure. This is where the POR starts to kick in. The POR might be a little low, but it works. So it only dropped about half a gallon at 3,000 PSI. The 
pretty efficient. That's what the customer was saying too, that if he could have the pump back running 60% efficiency, he'd be happy with that. Okay. Yeah, you give me 9, 10, 12 hours on stuff, but I'll get it figured out. <laughs> Time and, like you said, you got to you, you got to be stubborn. We we're almost taking this thing off the bench this morning, and then Lloyd's like, "Let's try a couple of things here." And the more Lloyd got into it, well, now we have the thing running, eh? So it's yep. and it works. That's the main thing. I don't care about anything else. It works. So in conclusion, we made sure that the pump is okay. We did it in a very economical manner. Generally, you always want in a closed loop system to check the pump and the motors at the same time. We could very well repair the pump, put it back on the machine with a damaged motor, and the pump gets damaged again. In this case, shortcuts were taken to save costs. I believe that our total bill for our job came to about 12% uh, of what they were originally quoted from somebody else. It's one of those situations where as long as you explain the risks to the customers, then they can make a decision based on uh, the, you know, their wallet and their intentions and so forth of it. Uh, and then we're happy to go ahead and do this, but I probably would have made it a little bit more clear to the customer about how they are not properly troubleshooting this problem. This here is a... Uh, Sure that's let me make sure that's actually true before I <laughs> and they would electronically uh, do what this injured valve does and what does it do Jesus I'm gonna re say that again yeah. here <laughs> so if you turn it on Fraser I don't think people realize how much work it is to do all this Help put that in there so that they know how much work it is to do all this for them, for the, the 200 views we get. Cut. <laughs> we just got these buy hydraulic shirts in. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Send us an email, sales at leftcohydraulics.com with your address and size, and we're going to give a few out.